my journey through Pinterest. Hey everyone, welcome back to my journey through Pinterest. Today I will be bringing you a activity from my woodworking board. Fun story, I've always loved crafting. My husband Dave loves woodworking and during COVID, he made a lot of really cool things for our home. And so I wanted to learn something new and so he taught me how to use the saw and the drills and all the fun stuff. He even bought me a respirator for when I'm sanding. And so I journeyed through my boards and found this really cool post from 68 Woodworking on Instagram all about how to make a charcuterie or breadboard. So today's video will be featuring how I do that. I'm gonna be over at my friend Joanne's house and um, giving it a shot. So first, what I am going to do, and what I did, is I printed off five different fonts of a very simple phrase called daily bread. Since I'm going to be making a breadboard, I thought that, that was appropriate. I used my brother's scan and cut and used some stencil vinyl and five different fonts to print off um, these sayings. So. You take this, which looks like a dental pick, because it is, and I'm going to weed out um, my sayings. So here we go. All right, so we have our five different options. Let's say daily bread. Hmm. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. So the board that I have chosen today is a piece of um, maple. So I found this at the hardwood store yesterday. Um, I went out to my garage and I trimmed out this handle, which will continue to need some more work because um, me and the jigsaw had a little bit of an argument. So we're not gonna pay attention to this handle right yet. Um, but I found this piece of maple. Maple is a hard wood, so it's great for putting uh, raw meats and cheeses on when it's finished. And you can find a finish um, that's not chemical based, so like a mineral oil. And I'll even show you what we have for today. Um, you will see here on my board, this red strip. This is actually a maple wood filler. There was a little bit of a crack right in the wood. And so what I did is I put that filler into that crack. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sanding block, it's a 220 sanding block, and I'm just gonna sand it down. And then I'll talk about the process of how to prep the wood for burning. So I'm just gonna take my block. I'm gonna go with the grain. And all the excess of this wood filler. It's gonna look great with the grains of this board. All right, almost. Move to a little piece of sandpaper, a little grittier. And look at that. Can't even see where that split was. There was actually a process to get the board ready enough for burning as well as oiling. <laughs> so, what I needed to do is to take my orbital sander, and I have more of these at home, but I wanted to show you and go through about four different grits of sandpaper. <clears throat> I started with 80 and kind of got a nice shape of the wood, moving to 150 and also to 220 um, to make it nice and smooth. That's how you prep the wood. I also took time to sand the edges to make it nice and round um, and comfortable as well as the handle. But we know that this handle needs a little bit more work. So once this is all smooth and sanded. We are gonna get ready to put our stencil on, apply the wood burning solution, and do some wood burning. So, hang tight. I'm gonna take this rag, use a t-shirt if you'd like, and I'm gonna get all this dust, this wood sawdust that I, that I accumulated from sanding. 
to make the board nice and smooth. All right, so we picked this option for our red board, daily bread. So to get the stencil ready to be put onto the board, we have to transfer it using some transfer tape. So I cut a strip the same length as the quote um, or the saying, and I will show you how to apply it. So essentially this allows the stencil to be transferred to the wood. Um, put that tape over like that. I use this lovely little tool to kind of help adhere this transfer tape to the stencil. I'm going to bring my board back up here. Once that's all set, I'm gonna peel off the backing. It's always my tricky part. And you're going to kind of want to go slowly just in case some of these little pieces in the words pop up. You can just kind of fold it back and help them find their place. All right. Now comes the tricky part. Centering the word on my board. Kind of going to eyeball it. You can use a ruler, but I want it right in the center. That looks about right. So once you feel like you have the right position, you're gonna take and press the stencil down with your fingers and then use this uh, tool again to go back over the stencil. And then this is what's really neat. To reveal all the void spaces, we're going to peel the transfer tape off. And now we have our stencil onto our board and ready to apply the burning solution. So as I mentioned, I have a ridiculous amount of pins on Pinterest, likes on Instagram. Um, and in my head, I have wanted to do all these things and sometimes I think I have done them. Um, but anyway, I found on Instagram um, people who are doing some wood burning and not with the tool that I used to see when I was a kid, but using this stuff called torch paste. And it's the solution that when applied to the wood and then with uh, the application of a heat gun, it actually burns into the wood, the pattern that you have um, designed. And so I'm gonna try that and see how it works. All right, from the directions, it says only use a little bit. So I'm gonna take and apply some of the torch paste to the top of my stencil, like that. I realized I forgot a step. Because my stencil is very close to the edge and I don't wanna get any of the torch paste on the other parts of the wood, I'm just gonna take a little bit of painter's tape and make a border. Painter's tape is amazing. All right, just like that. And then if I kind of squeegee over um, onto the tape, it's it's not gonna hurt my board. All right, next I have a couple of little, um, they're called squeegees, these little green things, you can find them on Amazon, um, that I'm gonna use to distribute the torch paste through my um, stencil. So what I'm doing is just moving this torch paste with my squeegee um, through the void spaces of my stencil. Now I have, if you can see, way too much. So I'm gonna actually take, you want our super thin, thin layer. And put some back, a little goes a super long way. And then once you've applied this, there's no streaks or clumps. You're gonna let it dry for maybe about two minutes. So it no longer looks wet. All right. 
next we wait. And it's time to break out the rhythm and the rhyme. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that is very much me. Anyway, welcome back. It is time to get burning, but there's one more step before we can use this powerful heat gun. I feel like a Charlie's angel here, my gun. Um, we have to remove the tape and weed out all the pieces of the stencil that we don't want to get burned with the, with the heat gun. So I'm going to remove my tape. Here. And then I'm gonna take off my vinyl. And what will be left and what you see in that kind of orange brownish tint is the burning solution that's soaked into the wood. Now we have to get up all of these little pieces of blue um, vinyl. So I'm gonna use my weeding tool to go back in and gently remove them so they don't burn. They say it's a very easy process to burn this wood, but we will find out. And I can't wait to check this off my list. All right, let's get going. I am going to put a mask on, even though a lot of this is not toxic. It still fumes. So let's put our mask on. We're all used to wearing these things adds a little bit of protection. We did open the window to give some ventilation. Now here we go. All right, so you might see in some of your work Looks like a little bit of the torch paste kind of seeped out a little bit underneath my stencil. Um, and so what I'm doing is just taking my scraping tool or my weeding tool and just going back and smoothing up the edges. Um, this board is hot right here um, and it will feel a little bit bumpy, uh, but we're gonna take care of that in a little bit. So once you kind of clean up anything if you see some spots that look like maybe they're light in color, you can actually go back, like right here, with your heating tool and apply a little bit more heat to get them nice and dark. I'm gonna show you on this handle because I'm going to be cutting portion of it off. I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen if you hold the heat gun in one place for too long. It actually burns the wood. And you don't want those marks, see that? You don't want those marks around your leathering. That's why you keep moving it pretty fast, like that. All right, we're gonna let that cool and then we're gonna come back, sand it and condition it. So the second to last step before finishing the board is we're gonna do something called raising the grain. So because this will be wiped down and not sealed with something like um, a polycrylic or a polyurethane, it's gonna be sealed with a mineral oil. You wanna make sure that when it does get wet, that the grains of the wood stay down. So you do something called raising the grain. So I'm just going to spritz very lightly over the wood and then let it dry. And what you'll do is you'll start to feel, it It will feel bumpy. And so that's the wood grain kind of coming up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sand that down and then we'll be able to finish it. 
So next, I'm going to take a high grit sandpaper and I'm going to gently, 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 just go over my lettering to remove some of the charred wood. I don't want, I want to be really careful not to spread, as you can see, some of that ash around. So I have a nice clean cloth, a dry, dry cloth, just to wipe some of that away. Now this is burnt into the wood, so it will last a really long time. You can feel it's just becoming one with this piece of maple wood. All right, it's ready for conditioning. We are on our final steps of making this cheese board, bread board, our daily bread board. Um, so we've raised the grain with some water. Um, and if you were to feel this, you had touch of vision, you'd feel that there's like, it feels gritty. You don't wanna have this feeling after the board's already done, which is why you do that stuff now before you finish. I'm gonna take a super fine 220 grit sandpaper and just go back over and sand down that grain. Just make sure to be nice and gentle over the burnt part. Although it is pretty smooth into this piece of wood. I'm gonna take my cloth. I'm gonna wipe it down. It's a little bit gritty over here. All right, this board feels pretty smooth to me. Now, one of my favorite steps, after you wipe it down with a nice clean cloth or an old t-shirt, is we're going to condition the wood with some Howard Butcher Block Conditioner. This is food safe, it's beeswax, it's mineral oil, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna penetrate into the wood, creating a nice moisture seal so that when you wipe down the board um, later on after you've had stuff on it, it will protect the board. More, oh, found a little bit more roughness here. All right, here we go. Take your hand or a cloth, put a generous amount on. Spread it all over. The board. And look at that pretty grain pattern in this maple edges. And then you're going to allow this to sit and soak in and you'll wipe it off with a cloth depending on how porous your wood is and how you've sanded it. You might want to do this once or twice. Now some people will then go an additional step and use a wax but because this is gonna be mostly just a breadboard, um, I think a nice conditioning will work. Be back in a minute. All right, we have let our breadboard soak in our mineral oil, our Howard's Butcher Block Conditioner. And so now I'm gonna just take my cloth, find a clean side, and we're gonna wipe it off. All that oil. Have soaked into this breadboard. And within about, I don't know, 24 hours or so, let it condition a little bit. It will be ready for use. Care instructions just take a, sp a sponge, like a cloth with some warm, soapy water, um, and just like wipe the board down. You do not want to take and submerge this into water as it will damage the board. From time to time, the board you will find will dry out. So if you take a little bit of 
You can take some olive oil, you can take some vegetable oil or some mineral oil and just season your board with it by just rubbing it on, letting it sit, and wiping it off with a cloth. I hope you like my board. First pin completed. I'm so excited with how my breadboard came out that I in fact gave it to my friend Joanne who let me shoot at her house. Um, and her husband loves making bread, so I'm super excited to give that to her. Please come back uh, next week to see where I go and what journey we're gonna explore.